A man who dares to waste one hour of time has not discovered the value of life. We stopped looking for monsters under our bed when we realized that they were inside us. The love for all living creatures is the most noble attribute of man. It is not the strongest of the species that survives, not the most intelligent that survives. It is the one that is the most adaptable to change. The highest possible stage in moral culture is when we recognize that we ought to control our thoughts. An American monkey, after getting drunk on brandy, would never touch it again. And this is much wiser than most men. Intelligence is based on how efficient a species became at doing the things they need to survive. In the long history of humankind, and animal kind too, those who learned to collaborate and improvise most effectively have prevailed. Besides love and sympathy, animals exhibit other qualities connected with the social instincts, which in us would be called moral. Man selects only for his own good, nature only for that of the being which she tends. There is no fundamental difference between man and animals in their ability to feel pleasure, pain, happiness, and misery. Freedom of thought is best promoted by the gradual illumination of men's minds, which follows from the advance of science. The very essence of instinct is that it's followed independently of reason. In conclusion, it appears that nothing can be more improving to a young naturalist than a journey in distant countries. If I had my life to live over again, I would make it a rule to read some poetry, listen to some music, and see some painting or drawing at least once a week. It is difficult to believe in the dreadful but quiet war lurking just below the serene facade of nature. Sexual selection acts in a less rigorous manner than natural selection. The latter produces its effects by the life or death at all ages of the more or less successful individuals. A moral being is one who is capable of reflecting on his past actions and their motives, of approving of some and disapproving of others. The limit of man's knowledge in any subject possesses a high interest, which is perhaps increased by its close neighborhood to the realms of imagination. Such simple instincts as bees making a beehive could be sufficient to overthrow my whole theory. Two distinct elements are included under the term inheritance, the transmission and the development of characters. Ignorance more frequently begets confidence than does knowledge. I am convinced that natural selection has been the main but not exclusive means of modification. A naked man on a naked horse is a fine spectacle. I had no idea how well the two animals suited each other. If it wasn't for seasickness, all the world would be sailors. <laughs>